Hi there, how you doing? I'm in uh, Camden today, Camden Town in London, uh, home of the famous Camden Market. Uh, it's, it's a funny area really, you've got a collection of very expensive uh, properties and it's very expensive to live here and at the same time you've got the sort of still, even from my childhood, I remember the sort of down and outs and drunks who hang around. I mean if you can see behind me there's a group of people drinking and dropping cans and they're obviously drunk and it's like midday um, and the police won't do anything it's not actually illegal to drink in public in in the UK perhaps it should be uh, it might sound like I'm a spoil sport but a lot of anti-social behavior goes on through drinking and drinking in public uh, in America it's not allowed but here it is uh, so, so what am I doing here today I've got a couple of appointments in London I thought I'd pop into the place where I kind of grew up around here and just have a look and see what's happening. I mean, it doesn't look very busy. Normally, this, this street is teeming with people. This road here used to be two lanes, and the council in their wisdom said, no, no, we have to make it one lane uh, because we want more room for people to walk around. Well, okay, uh, maybe on a busy Sunday it is quite crowded here, but there wasn't really that much trouble uh, for people walking, but now you've got traffic everywhere. But it, it's not that busy. I mean, just up behind me there is where Camden Market would be. That's the station there. And then up behind me is Camden Lock and Camden Market, which when I was growing up, it wasn't a market there. It was just an old bit, bit of ruined old buildings and things. And then it sort of just boomed and, and went up from there. So it does show you what can happen to an area and how it can be transformed by just something like a little market, a, a selling stuff on, on stalls in the market, it's, it's amazing. Uh, so it's completely changed the area, but it still has its rough, rough diamond edge around here. It's still one of those areas that you've got to watch your back, keep moving. If you keep still too long, then someone's going to come up and try and hustle you for something or sell you something or, or whatever. Um, and, and and there's a few down and outs here and drug addicts and that sort of thing as well. So it's a, it's, a, it's a strange old area, but the property prices here have, have remained strong. Um, Google is just down the road in King's Cross, so they benefited from the Google expansion. And the property market here is, is, still, is still buoyant, still strong. And, and in London it's still strong, but to me it feels like a bit of the calm before the storm, because you know we've got the job furlough scheme coming to an end not too distant future in a month or so's time and then I think we're going to see where we really are you know it's like when the tide goes out who will be there left with their trunks down and that's why I think we're going to have to see what, what the real score is uh, in terms of in terms of uh, you know where we are job wise um, so we'll see what happens there. I think if, if jobs start getting lost in a big way, then how can markets still stay high? How, how can we have a stock market that's still high and, and people losing their jobs left, right and centre? Every day you hear the, 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 the news, there's more jobs disappearing. Behind me is the World's End pub, a famous large pub, which uh, is not open till the evening. Um, and then this is the... This is where the, the roads merge, going up towards Swiss Cottage, Kentish Town, up towards Holloway, up that way. It's, it's a very, very busy junction, this. Loads of buses here. When I was here, you didn't need a car. You could walk out your doorstep almost and jump on a bus and get anywhere in London. You can actually walk from here to the West End. It's a couple of miles. Uh, and it, it's, it's always been a, a fascinating sort of area. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, to me, it seems like the calm before the storm. I, I think there's still more trouble to come because I mean, look what's happening to the travel industry now. Um, I think we're going to see more airlines go out of business, more travel companies go out of business. Uh, you know, shops, shops, businesses are down by 75%. Uh, can you see these guys behind? Can you hear the noise they're making? Where are the police? They're not anywhere. They, they, they should be moved on. Anyway, that's another subject. But yeah, to me, uh, I'd, I'd be very cautious about investing in anything at the moment. Um, because I, I, I think that there's more trouble to come. Lots of people are predicting, not just me, but big investors like Ray Dalio, uh, Warren Buffett, 
holding back at the moment because they, they see another dip in the economy come in, maybe a dip in the, the stock market, which normally follows that if the stock market's dipping, then property prices tend to follow. Uh, because how, how can you have a strong property market with, with, with mass unemployment? If unemployment doubles and trebles here, I, I can't see how you can have a strong market in anything, uh, let alone property. So we, we, we shall have to see how that transpires. But lots of investors are holding back on doing things at the moment because they, they, they feel there's more trouble to come. And with the government's printing trillions of pounds and dollars, that, that must have an effect of devaluing the currency. And the pound in your pocket or the pound in your bank account is going to be devalued over time. And we may even see um, a, a, a government-led devaluation where they just uh, literally say, right, we are devaluing the value of the pound or the dollar and say, well, you know, it, it's now worth 80 pence. Uh, that can happen. And, and the reason they do that is because they're in trouble and they can pay off their, their debts, the, the borrowings and the interest on their debts with, with devalued pounds. Does that sound like a bit of... So I think I lost the connection there. Yeah, if, if they devalue the pound, if they just say, well, or the dollar, right, the dollar is now worth, not worth a dollar, it's now worth 80 cents, 80 pence on a pound. They, they've devalued the, the money, and then when they're paying back their, their interest on the debt that they've raised, or, or they're paying you back on interest on the bonds that you've invested with that government, valued money. They can do that with, with devalued money. Yeah, it sounds like a bit of a con, and it, and it is. Um, they, they've done times, and it could happen again here. Um, so we, I, I just think there's, there's more problems to come. Uh, some people are rushing into gold and silver. Uh, that, that, that can be a little bit specialist, and, and also you're not going to earn any money on your gold and silver. Well, that has gone up a lot in the recent past, but I, I wouldn't necessarily, I'm not recommending you jump into these things you've got to take your own advice but um, my at the moment I'm just biding my time waiting to see what happens make sure you've got some savings uh, which I talked about last night always have a savings a contingency fund uh, because you know if, if emergencies happen you don't want to be going to payday lenders or credit card companies paying you know, 20 30 percent interest you want to have your own contingency fund and not rely on expensive credit so, so there you go. Um, I, my, my tip today really is just to watch out for the markets, make sure you have cash in the bank and don't use payday lenders uh, and, and credit card companies if you can. Make sure you've got your own contingency fund and let, let's see what happens when this job furlough scheme ends and, and, and the tide goes out and we'll see who's left uh, swimming with, the, with no trunks, as they say. So thanks for listening. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'm, I'm in Camden Town, as I said, in London, where it, it does seem quiet. You know, it's, it's not as busy as it was. Certainly, a lot of tourist areas in London are, are pretty quiet at the moment. They've probably got maybe 20% of the, the, the usual foot flow. So how these businesses can survive is, is another story. How can a business survive when it's only doing 25% of the business or 20% of the business? And that, that, that's not just in central London, that's all over the place. Some of these businesses are just hanging on by the skin of their teeth, literally relying on their savings and reserves to keep the business going. Other businesses are trying to go into administration and uh, then renegotiate with their landlords. Uh, near me, a big Debenham store is closed, and they said they closed because they tried to renegotiate with their landlords but couldn't come to an agreement. And for some reason, the landlord said no. I mean, if I was their landlord, I would have said, "Fine, you know, let's 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 have a lower rent, and uh, let, let's keep you there." Now it's going to be empty for quite some time, and then they've got to find another tenant. It, it just seems seems crazy to me. But that's what a lot of big stores are doing, and in fact, the government are making the insolvency laws a little bit more flexible to allow businesses to be able to, um, uh, you know, wipe out some of their debts and come back with, without the company going under completely. So a lot of the big companies are, as I said, um, just going into a form of administration or renegotiating things with their, with their 
creditors with their landlords in particular because that's one of their biggest expenses if you're in retail so watch out for that but obviously if you're a smaller uh, trader it's, it's not so easy because the landlord can just say well just go away but I, I think there's definitely a case for you know to try and renegotiate things at the moment particularly on things like rents because landlords um, I'm sure landlords will, would be flexible and, and will will negotiate with you so thanks for listening and have a great day bye for now